My friends, happy new year. It is 2023, baby. Get excited. I'm excited. Have you had a chance yet to break a new year's resolution? I mean, we're not even 24 hours in, but sometimes they are hard to keep. Maybe you've made a few new year resolutions already. Maybe the classics. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to eat better. For me, I'm going to keep it pretty simple this year. I'm going to set a New Year's resolution to binge Netflix more. You know, 2022, I really felt like I slacked off from my COVID experiences, and I need to get back to it. I need to get to the place where Netflix is asking me, are you still watching? And I'm like, yes, Netflix, I'm still watching. Don't need to ask me anymore, and I'll take some popcorn. I want you to think about New Year's resolutions and habits. For me, habits, there are certain things that happen every single day for me. For example, at night, we set the dishwasher to run. We also make the coffee, get it ready to go in our special little automatic coffee grinding brewing machine. It will actually grind it in the morning and then brew it. It is the best thing that we have found to have some pretty good fresh coffee in the morning. So that gets set at night, people. In the morning, I put on my Ugg slippers that my wife Becky was kind enough to buy me in Christmas time. Super snuggly Ugg warm slippers. Of course, drink the coffee every morning, make food for the kitties. Every morning, I hug every human being in my house, tell them that I love them. I will have a moment of gratitude where I will just say, Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for what lies ahead. Just a moment of thankfulness. Always take a shower, always get ready. You know, there are certain things you just have a habit to do. And habits can be really, really good. Or habits can be... Mm, not so good. So I want you to begin to think about what you do every single day that is a habit. And think about this. What if putting God first became a habit, just like me making coffee, just like me and Becky setting the dishwasher, just like me putting on my Ugg slippers in the morning? It just happens. It happens because it's important. It happens because I want it to happen. I want you to think about what if you communicating with God, praying, what if you having a moment of gratitude in the morning was as automatic as making that coffee, drinking that coffee, something that's a part of your morning routine right now? What if you talked with God as often as you grab your phone first thing in the morning? I know, New Year started off with a little bit of conviction. I'm feeling it myself. One big habit that I want you to think about this morning, first day of 2023, here's one big habit. Make it a resolution to last seven days. Now, in seven days, when we are back meeting together in person, 2023, January 8th, we are going to start our 21 days of prayer. It is a fresh book. It is a fresh outlook for 21 days of prayer and fasting, and I've been through this, our team has been working on this, and I'm excited about it. I want to give you a little preseason 21 days of prayer and fasting habit. Write this down, one big habit. I will give God my first five. First five. I will give God my first five. First five minutes of the day. Putting God first isn't something new. It is something absolutely ancient. Check this out, Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words. Verse two, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. 10 commandments get started with the mighty commandment. Nothing comes before me. Nothing comes before me, not any other priorities, certainly no other gods. In our modern times, you know, we can make other things idols. Back then they were into worshiping little figurines and literal small idols. Golden calf made by hands. 
I mean, there were some moments where idol worship was a big, big, bad thing. But in our own life, modern day times, we can make things idols. If we care more about binging or streaming whatever is on Netflix, HBO Max, Disney, if we're arranging our life more around that than we are God, maybe it's become an idol. Even things that can be good for us, like working out and exercise, can become an idol if we pour more into that than we do our relationship with God. Mountains, skiing, snowboarding, I love all this stuff, hiking, through hiking, backpacking, driving fast within the legal limits. All of these things can become idols if we're not careful. It can capture more of our heart. If we find ourselves investing more money and more time and more interest and more mental space, more physical exertion than we do in putting God first, maybe we have created a modern day idol. So think about this. I will give God my first five. So we are starting totally doable, but it is wrapped in this principle that there is nothing in our life that should ever come before God as the number one thing in our life. Our one big habit, I will give God my first five. God should be number one in our life above all Things. Now, Jesus says something very powerful about putting the kingdom first. Jesus didn't give 100% of his life for 90% of mine. It's 100 for 100. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 6. So do not worry. Look, humans have had a challenge with worry for all time. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. Here's the verse, baby. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Do you see that? As we keep God, number one. Keep him the top priority in our life above all relationships, above spouse, above kids, above family, above work, above career. As we keep him number one, he's going to make sure to provide what we need as long as we keep him first. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. That's a good word. Thank you, Jesus. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Can I get an amen? Can I get a digital amen? <laughs> Each day has enough trouble of its own. Somebody say, let's go. Remember the one big habit. I will give God my first five. So we are talking about prioritizing God first in the day. First in the day. So how could this look? I will give God my first five. First five real significant minutes of the day. Maybe it starts like this, before you start getting ready, before you start getting ready, before you trigger makeup routine, clothes, getting stuff ready for the day, this is pre all of that. Before you start getting ready, maybe first five, maybe it's up, bathroom, Uggs on, coffee in hand, first five starts. Whatever version of that works for you, make it your own. Here's how we're going to pray. We're gonna break it down into a cute little acronym. We're gonna pray, okay? P, we're gonna take one minute to praise God. One minute. Thank you, Jesus, for a good night's rest. Thank you, God, for an opportunity to make a difference today. Thank you, God, for an opportunity to love my family, to love my kids, to love my friends, to love my coworkers. God, thank you for loving me. Pick one thing and for one minute, just give God some praise. That's the first letter, P. One minute to praise God for something in your life. Don't go over a minute though. Remember, first five. R stands for this, one minute to repent. Now, if you're like me, you might need two. <laughs> two minutes, we're gonna keep it to one. One minute to repent, what's repenting? Repenting is acknowledging that there is something in your life that you need to ask God to forgive you for. Maybe you made a mistake the previous day. Maybe you blew up, maybe you lost your temper. Maybe you said something you shouldn't have said. Maybe you didn't say something that you should have said. It's a minute to clean out the ashes 
from the fireplace of your life so that you can stir up a fresh flame. So it's not just repenting. It's this idea of turning 180 degrees from that behavior. You know, not asking God to forgive you every day for the same thing. God, forgive me for getting mad. God, forgive me for losing my temper. God, forgive me for getting mad the day before. God, forgive me for getting mad. We don't need to keep asking God to forgive us. We need to seek God for transformation. Get some godly people in our life. Start pushing into the word of God. See what does the Bible have to say about language and attitude. We don't just keep doing the same things. That's a sin pattern. If you're in that zone, you need some breakthrough. Take a minute. Ask God to forgive you one minute to repent. And then find some passion for the day. Something to get excited about. A. A is one minute to ask. It's okay to ask God for things in your life. Sometimes maybe we feel selfish or maybe we feel like, well, it's too me-centered or does God really want to hear what I need or what I want? I think he does. It's not for God's benefit. I think it's for our benefit to remind ourselves that God does care about the issues in our life. So take one minute and ask God for things. This is something I will ask God for many times is preparation. Now I have my days scheduled out pretty well. I use calendar, just a good old school, Apple calendar, iCal on the phone, computer, sync it all up. And I will, of course, look and see what's going on in the day. And I will pray about those things that are coming up. But I will pray a prayer in this kind of zone and say, God, prepare me for all the things I know that are going to happen. The meetings, the conversations, the events. But I will also ask God to prepare me for the things that I don't see coming. And sometimes those are the most important and sometimes those are the most full of potential. So I want to be prepared for those. I will ask God to prepare me for that. So that is P-R-A and then Y, one minute to yield, to yield, to find some space, to breathe in and to breathe out. And to have this attitude of listening, this yielding is a quiet minute. It is an understanding that you are ready to listen for any small nudge that God would have for you for the day. Now, you might be thinking about this and like, uh oh, Pastor Nick is not too good at arithmetic. He is running out of time and running out of letters. I'm going to put one more in here so we even out. An S. Now this S, you might think this is weird, but this is something I will do almost every single day. I'll get into the kitchen. I'll get the coffee. I'll be doing some prayer time, not super formal. And I will start doing some light exercise. So here is S baby. I am challenging you one minute to do 10 body weight squats. Okay. Praise ends with the S. We're going to do 10 squats. Now, look, I'm not playing in the morning. I will do this. I'll kind of put my hands together like this. Here we go. And I'll be yielding and I'll be thinking about God. And then I'll bring it down all the way. Now go all the way down, baby. I don't even know if you can see me anymore to parallel, bring it back up nice and slow. And I will breathe in On the way down, I will breathe out on the way up and I will do 10 of those. I've got time. I'll do a few other things, but I want to challenge you to do that. Now, if you can't do a full body weight squat, 10 of them, you can do them definitely in less than a minute. But if you have some limitations, modify that thing. Maybe for you, it's halfway down. Maybe for you, it's an exercise in a chair. Maybe for some of you, I know for me, I'll take the kitchen counter and I'll start repping out some push-ups, just nice and easy, warm the old body up a little bit. And I'll say, God, thank you that I have some shoulders that will work. Thank you that I have a body that will work on some level. It helps me find some gratitude. Praise. One minute to praise God. One minute to repent. One minute to ask God something. One minute to yield and one minute to do some spiritual squats. 2023, I must say, I'm excited about it. I really am. This 
year, maybe more than any other year, I'm feeling like God has placed on my heart the phrase steps of faith. Not just step of faith, steps of faith. Now, we have done some amazing things together as a church, as a family. We have built orphanages in Africa. We have built churches in Africa. We have built a Bible training center in Eastern Congo. We have partnered with Urban Outreach to help feed the hungry and clothe the cold. We have partnered with Sox Place. We have partnered with missionaries who are advancing the gospel on university college campuses like CU Boulder, CSU, and other campuses across the country. We've done some things that have stretched us. But this year, I'm believing that we are going to break ground and to start building a new home for Go Church. Go Church is the church. You are the church. We are going to build a home that I believe God is going to use as a tool, as a resource to reach thousands and thousands and thousands here in this community to launch growing effective ministry all over the world from a new home, a place with some permanence that we can really use as a phenomenal ministry tool, not just the building, but to keep excelling in our mission to live local to make a transformative difference where we live. Your neighbors should see Jesus in you. My neighbors should see Jesus in me. We're gonna go global. We're gonna keep pushing the gospel through missionary hands all throughout the world. And we're gonna live like Jesus. This is our discipleship component. Steps of faith. Some of you, hopefully all of us, are going to give more financially than we have ever given in our life and be able to stand back and say, can you believe what God has done in my business? Can you believe what God has done in our personal finances? As we keep God first, we're going to see God's faithfulness come through. I'm excited about that. Steps of faith. It is the foundation. Faith is the foundation of everything we do. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse one and two, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. How's your foundation? This week, give God your first five every day. Pray. Get ready for 21 days of prayer and fasting starting January 8th. Get ready to take a step of faith into February. Get ready to take a step of faith into generosity campaign, into casting vision for future, into building a permanent home for Go Church, into missions, into seeing our kids grow, into seeing your life grow, your faith grow, your understanding in Jesus grow. It's steps of faith for us. And I want us to pray for that right now. God, we are your kids and we repent. I just stand in the gap right now for myself, everyone in Go Church, I repent. We repent if we have made things more important than you, anything, a hobby, career, money, the look, the contacts, the network, whatever it is. God, I'm sorry. We're sorry. We are actively putting you number one again in our life. Help us, God, as we prepare our hearts to start 21 days of prayer and fasting to take steps of faith, to see our foundation become firm. I pray grace for that, strength for that. I pray for passion for that. Help us get fired up. I don't want just another year. God, I want something phenomenal. I want something supernatural. I want to believe for your fullness, your will to be done in our life in and through Go Church. Nothing above your will, nothing beneath it. I pray right at your will. Your will come and it be done. In Jesus' name, we pray it. Amen. Go church. Let's do this. January 8th. Don't just come. Bring somebody. Don't just come. Come with a prepared heart. Give God your first five. 
Becky and I love and believe in you so much. Let's say our mission together. Our mission is to live local, go global, and live like Jesus. We love you.